welcome to my workbench. I'm Wilson Mann from the Flight Test Forums. Wanted to post an instructional video on how to build my FT droppable, the uh, FT ordinates. So when you download the plans, you'll you can print them out on the just paper and trace them. Or I did two printouts for myself. I did one on the plain paper. As you see, I fixed it directly to my foam board. And I printed off another copy in cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock that I made the curved pattern. You'll see that as soon as you download the plans. And this I just cut out with my X-Acto blade. And each one of these ridges I pre-cut, just lightly scored them. Don't press too hard, your razor will cut through pretty easily. It's just to ease it into, uh, into the shape and uh, make your lines a little more crisp. Then go ahead and wrap around and I affixed with a pe large piece of tape, wrapped it around front and back to hold it nice and secure. Other tools you're going to need, some generic tape. This will be used mostly for the nose and fixing your little tapered cowl. Popsicle stick for score lines little piece of ballast. I'll get into what this is needed for later as well as a couple of magnets. For the drop mechanism you'll need your standard size servo or any other servo really. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You'll also need a piece of wire for your control horn and this control horn is called an offset door hinge. These doors can be found at Hobby King. They're pretty inexpensive. Get a bunch of them for a couple of bucks. And so there is a matching magnet on this side and you'll have a magnet that will go inside the ordinance itself. And just so you know this is a very strong magnet holding the steel. It does work and it holds extremely well and I'll demonstrate that after I've got it built. So I think my glue gun is mostly heated up now. Yep, we've got glue flowing so let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is assemble your tail section, and I start out by assembling these two pieces. So they're they're the same size when you hold them up together, but one's got a slit on the opposite side of the other. So figure it out, it's going to go together like that, make a little X. So use the X's on your building board, doesn't matter which one, and we're just going to apply a liberal glue to one side and the other side and slip it into place. Make sure it's aligned well. Nice 90 degree angle to each other. Let it dry. You can get a piece of scrap foam. And this is honestly just for weight savings if you want to scrape this glue out. And then once it's pretty secure, we're going to go back to the trailing edge part and try to fill in some of these gaps. Don't need a whole lot. This part doesn't need to be too terribly strong. And again, just squeegee it out. Just trying to reinforce it. Save a little weight because you want the majority of the weight of this to be at the front, not at the back help it drop in a more scale-like manner. As many of you know from the form, I'm a very scale builder. So, that out of the way, set that to the side. We'll start building the box structure. As you can see, I cut it out and I did do my score cuts and I went ahead and folded over each piece and did a 45 degree bevel. The reason being, again, we're going to be making a box structure out of this. So start on one side, put a little glue down, pull it up 90 degrees, and this part it is critical that you scrape out any extra glue. Hold it for a few seconds. And we're going to do the other side. Bit of glue, fold it up, scrape out the excess. 
The reason you want to scrape out the excess is this is going to be going inside of here. So to make it go in easier, it just, just scrape out the glue as you go. We're going to put glue in there, in fact, but it needs to be hot so when you slide this on, easy. So now that that side is done, we're going to put the top on. We're going to apply glue in both places this time and have an overlap of the little piece of paper that's off the edge. Hold it in place and scrape the excess. Blue stringers everywhere. While it's drying. And then for the paper tab, we're just going to put a little piece of glue in. Just a little. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. And just roll it on over. Make it nice and secure. To the building board, too. If you get that all a little messed up, some uh, older types of glue guns that don't have the silicone surround around the nozzle, you can just take a little bit of glue that's dripping on there, smooth it over the edge. If you don't have a silicone, take a piece of tape, seal it over top, you're good to go. So now, making sure that it's going to be flat on the surface, what I like to do is with this, the wider end, the wider end, take the end of it and just pinch. What you're doing is you're crushing the foam a little bit so that it's going to mold to that corner a little better when we put the box on. So what we're going to do is put it on the build surface. This is the general technique. Have it there, align each one of the fins with the corner of the box and it's just going to slide on. As you can see, it slides on pretty easy right now, but it can come apart, but that's the general idea. So now we just put glue in each one of the four corners. Again, doesn't have to be a whole lot. And then just repeat the process. Push it in place, wipe your glue out, make it prettier. And there's your tail. Easy peasy. Set that aside. We're going to move on to the main body of the ordnance at this time. So I cut mine out. A couple of tips with cutting your pieces out. Do not cut your score lines until after you have cut these out. And after you have cut 45 or even just 30 degree bevels. Just a little bit. Cut some of that meat out there because you're going to be folding this to make a curved dome. So make sure you cut that out before you score your lines. Now before the video I did score these vertical lines but I haven't cut those yet. I like to use my cheap aluminum ruler as a guide. Some people like to do it freehand, that's fine too. Again, you're not looking for anything terribly deep because once you score that paper, you can just crack it along just fine. So now that we have everything scored, ready to go, again we have another paper tab that we're going to be using to secure the whole thing together, much like we did on the box structure. So with your popsicle stick, as per FT protocol, score your lines again. And again, I just affix the paper plans directly to the foam, 8.5 by 11 sheet. And it, use some uh, Super 77 spray. You can also use some of the Elmer's multi-purpose adhesive. I like the 77 because it's a little more permanent. Again, work it around. And just in preparation, this piece that's opposite of the tab is going to be your hardest piece to fold. So make sure that it has plenty of give in it. The way you're going to shape it is 
going to be holding it in one hand and make adjustments in the other. You're looking for an octagonal shape, shape of a stop sign, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. You can also provide yourself another little bevel on these edges to help your installation. And again, it doesn't have to be a 45. Just a little bit to ease your way into it. We'll give you some wiggle room. Before we do that, we have two things to install on the inside. So the pointy ends are going to be the front of your ordnance. First thing you're going to want to do is install your magnet. Now I've pre-etched my magnet with my razor where you scratch up the surface. Some magnets are a little less shiny. You mostly just want a rough surface so that the hot glue will adhere to it. I've made a measurement three centimeters from the aftmost score line from the front and that's about one-third. It's a little ahead of one-third but generally about one-third. That's where you want to put your magnet, somewhere around there. And all I do is simply place it, press it into the foam, and you get a nice little imprint. I take my finer exacto, and cut the box out, push away your foam. What you're doing is you're making this so that the magnet can get closer to the other magnet and make a nicer bond. And this is actually going to be what holds the whole bond to your airplane. A lot of people don't believe that how well it works, but it absolutely does. I've been using this technique for a long time. A magnet to magnet will make it extremely strong, but in this case we're just going through a piece of paper on the ordnance itself and on the airplane. So scratchy side down, we put some glue in the hole, you don't need a whole lot, put it in there, press it down nice and hard, let the glue ooze out, try not to burn your finger of course, that's why I said only put a little in there, and you're set. Just to verify we got it on the right side, yep, it can stick it. All right, now, our ballast. The ballast that I'm using are just simple tire weights, stick-on tire weights from a local tire installation shop. I went in there asking for some, fully, in, fully intending to, to buy them, and they said, oh, no, here's a whole bunch of, I think they gave me at least a dozen, for absolutely nothing at all. On a strip of paper, these ones I took off and stuck to each other. These are two quarter ounce weights, so we got half an ounce of of weight here. And all we're going to do, it's already pre-etched, it's got some etchings on it. You can do more if you really want to. And I'm going to count four. One, two, three, four, obviously. So it's going to be completely opposite of the magnet to help balance it out. Just apply some glue and get it almost all the way to the very edge. Again, move it around, get that bond really, really well. Because with this weight, every time it falls, it's going to want to shake loose. And then you're going to have to rebuild unless you're completely, your ordinance is completely shot. So you can use, at this point, regular tape. I prefer extreme packing tape for this job, which I've pre-cut. All you want to do tape onto the weight itself and then tape all the way up to there. So what happens is when it falls, the weight, when it tries to pull away, it will try to pull away from a big portion of the body of the ordinance rather than just where it's glued. Help distribute the forces. Okay? So, moving right along, now we are ready to try to glue this whole, see, already my weight's coming off. Try to score that up some more.
Mini glue stick. A little more glue. Flip it over, squish it around. Much better. Okay, so now we're going to test it again. And you can either sit it on your build surface and look at it, but I prefer the roll around method. That's just me. I have big meaty hands. Some people do not have those. Now the same as always. Apply a bunch of glue to each one of these joints. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, just some. Get in there to hold its shape after we mold it. And then I apply here just a bit. I'm trying it the other way. First time for everything, right? That's not turning out too bad. It is important to hold it until it is dry, all the way. And again, you don't have to smear out the glue everywhere. Just let it set. Let it do its thing. You can see my little bit of paper sticking out here now. And yeah, so our weight is wanting to tip it over just as it could and should. We're trying to avoid that by having it opposite of the, of the magnet. It's not exactly right, but you know what? It's close enough. Close enough for flight test. And our scrap piece of foam. And again, you can smear the glue. You can use the tip. Or you can just use a piece of tape. Or all of the above. Again, this is meant to be disposable. It's going to be destroyed. After many, many drops, it's going to fall apart. The idea is to make it easy enough to redo over and over and over again. So now that it's mostly round, you can see there's a little bit of imperfection. You can try to redo it if you really want to. It's close enough. Just take your little pointy bits. Oh, let's see. Sometimes that happens. The foam comes off the paper with these smaller portions. Go ahead and glue it back on. That's why we're doing this test for right now. Because this is going to take the brunt of the of the fall. So we want this part to be pretty strong. Okay, and I dry fit it all together, all at once, coordinating it down, ah, like that. So that's the general shape you want, and we're going to do it all in one shot. Ah, let's see, paper's coming off of this thing. Beautiful. Now, after this, we're going to tape it all together. So don't be too critical about it. But we are going to apply the glue to only one side of each of the sharp pieces. Sounds like my wife's coming down to visit me. As you get the glue on each of the pointy bits. Again, you don't have to work too quickly, but quick enough to get it all together. And again, the same motion, keep it all together, hold it down with a thumb or a finger or whatever, just try to push it all together. And hold it there for a little bit. You can pick the extra glue off your finger while you wait. 
Or off your building board if it suits you. Again, this doesn't have to be perfectly sealed. It's going to get ugly anyway. Just keep that in mind. So I'm going to take my finger off. It's mostly staying together. Ready on the tape. We're going to use nice long strips of tape and go over each one. And you want it to go past the fold on each side. <coughs> Excuse me. So do one, then I do the opposite, 90 degrees to it. Help hold it all together. And then the next ones don't really matter. It'll all come together. Too short. New piece. That's better. Mm, another short piece. Take that down. And again, adding tape will make it stronger, um, but you're also adding weight. You still have to carry it up there in order to drop it. So that's what you're going for. It's a little springy, a little cushiony. It's not going to completely crumple. It just gives a little bit of something to push back on when it lands. So there you have it. There's the front end. There's the back end. Now we need this piece. Now remember the cardstock portion. Ah, I thought I forgot about it. This goes in like that. That's pretty much all you have to worry about. We'll put four pieces of tape after we glue this in. Now, find your magnet. Okay? You can see it as you took the, the foam away. You want the flat part of the box to match up with the flat part of the magnet. You don't want that because when you go to put this to the underside of your airplane it's not going to fit because of the pointy end of the box structure. Make sure it's rotated properly otherwise you're going to have to build another one. I did that twice on my prototypes. So again all it is glue, hot glue, one on each portion of these little fins. And then slide it into place. Okay. You can rotate it, try to center it. It's not too critical as long as this side with the magnet is flat. That's your main concern. And then as it's drying, take some more tape. Place it on your cardstock little cowl piece. It's just to hold it in place. It's pretty. It'll work just fine without this if you don't want to make it. That's totally cool. And of course you can spray paint this pretty much whatever color you want. I don't recommend the metallic ones. Uh, in my experience I haven't I haven't seen too good results with the metallic ones, but generally speaking, these thing, droppable things, you want to paint them bright, bright colors. So I've got some fluorescent pink in the garage, and I can paint mine that color so that I can find it again. Nice and strong. Nicely bonded. It does twist a little bit, but for this purpose, it's fine. So again, moving back to our mounting mechanism, again, it's just a simple servo with an offset door hinge that when the servo is activated will lift the magnet away from the surface. So at this point, I'm going to find my magnet, and there you go. Falls off when it's on the side, but up and down, 
it stays put. All right. I promise it'll stay there. If it doesn't, add a bigger magnet, and you'll know for the next build. Again, I've been using this mag, this same magnet system. You can see lots of glue here. I've put it on several different airplanes. It just works. So to show you how well it works, I'm going to take my servo tester that's plugged in and I'm going to plug it in real quick for you. As soon as it's plugged in, it's going to drop. And there you go. You see how the arm just lifted away ever so slightly and that's it. Now that can just be put on a single switch, you can put it on a three position, doesn't matter, program it how you will. The gear switch is great, especially on the storch, which is what this one is going to go on to. So you just use your gear switch because it doesn't have retractable landing gear. And uh, that's pretty much it. Make sure that you find it, make sure you're clear, you call out your intentions at the field. Do not drop anything if you're flying with someone and they don't know your intentions. You could drop this onto their plane and ruin it. It's common courtesy, it's common etiquette, and most people don't know about it who are getting into the hobby. But make sure you call it your intentions for droppable ordinances. Even if it's ping pong balls or parachute guys, people need to know what's going on. So I hope you have fun with it. I plan on doing target practice with this because I love dive bombing. I love the history of dive bombers. So hope you enjoy it. Happy building, and I'll see you on the forums. Take care.